Hey YouTube, Joshua C here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to service your own locking flex head ratchet. Let's get into it. Alright, so the ratchet of interest today is part number SHX ADB, and this is a half inch drive locking flex head. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to completely disassemble it and reassemble it. Um, now, if you have a fixed head model, there's going to be uh, information uh, relevant to you with regards to the ratchet head. Um, so everyone in ev uh, any variant could learn from this. Even the non-locking flex, I could show you how to uh, remove the joint screw. And also some tech tips uh, regarding the uh, installation of this joint and how to make it tighter if you have a non-locking variant. Let's rock. Alright, so the tools you're going to need are as follows. You're going to need a T8. The T8 is going to remove the locking tab here. Uh, you're going to need a T15, and that is for the uh, gear cover uh, on the ratchet head housing. And you're going to need a T27. So I'll fabricate a list here um, regarding all the tools. So the T27 is for the joint screw. And this should apply for the half-inch drive uh, models, uh, the half-inch frame. Okay, so for the first part, what I'm going to do is remove the ha ratchet head from the handle, the lower half. So I'm going to separate these halves, and I'm going to do that by removing this uh, joint screw, which is a T27. So now that the joint screw is removed, you can easily see uh, how the two parts separate. And now I'm going to focus my interest on the ratchet head itself and removing the internals. So the first step in uh, conducting that is simply removing these two T15 torques, or if you have a flat blade screwdriver in a pinch, that will work as well. Be careful not to strip these. Okay, so after removing these, these may be quite difficult because they do have Loctite as well as the joint screw, but once you have those two fasteners uh, removed, you should be able to remove the faceplate. Now I cleaned all of this, so hence yours is probably going to have a lot of grease and dirt. But uh, you guys can study the, um, the orientation of the parts or as such. You guys can see the gear, the pawl, uh, a W spring, uh, obviously uh, some sort of bridge for the selector switch, uh, and a spring and a ball bearing. Uh, the rebuilds kit usually have one with a captured plunger, but don't quote me on that. So, let's remove this, the pawl. The W spring, the uh, the um, spring for the ball detent uh, on the selector switch, and a ball bearing. So you could have a magnet ready. So I just have a magnet ready for the ball bearing. I'm going to remove this bridge. You guys can see this, and you'll see the selector switch will come out from the rear to the front. So that's how to completely disassemble your ratchet head. Okay, so now I'm going to reinstall the ratchet head um, and I'll show you precisely how I do that. Okay, so now you want to install the selector switch. So what you're going to do is come in from the inside. Okay, so once that's installed, as you guys can see, I move it over to one side. So once it's biased, now you could install this bridge. So once you have the bridge installed, uh, now you're going to install the um, ball bearing first. Now it's important to have the um, selector switch on either the on or off because that aligns this hole in such a way that the ball falls into the detent. So that's important to note. And I'm going to install it as such. All right. Now on to the next step, I'm going to install this V-spring. I'll get back to you after I'm done lubricating this and installing. Okay, um, so now we're going to install the ratchet pawl. Now it's important to note, so I'll turn on the light, this ratchet pawl, so that's another thing that while you have the selector switch, this uh, leg or this extended boss right here is going to fit precisely into that uh, channel or cut out in the selector switch. So it's going to go as such. So you're going to stick one leg into there just like that. And when you're going to install the gear, you're going to rock it into it and it'll compress this spring and uh, fall into this recess and allow 
and permit this to fall in and that is pretty much the most difficult part uh, in any ratchet install. Okay, so when installed correctly you should be able to see it uh, and uh, actually be able to operate the ratchet like this. So that's good. It's obviously flat and flush and it's good. You'll know when it's not, it'll kink and then not install. So it's one of those, um, when you get it right, you'll know, you know you nailed it. And now what I'm going to do is install the O-ring, which I already lubricated. Uh, actually at this point, I'm ready to install the faceplate. So let's do that. Now what you want to do is uh, install the, the two fasteners in the rear of the head. What you want to do, obviously function test it. Um, and once that passes is to remove the lock tab, what you're going to use is a T8. Uh, I'm not sure, technically this is a hex fastener, but I've been getting away with T8. I, I've been fortunate enough not to round it, so just get a good quality T8 uh, and uh, remove the locking tab. Okay, like so, as you guys can see this. Now, what you're going to do is remove this plunger. So this is the actual uh, locking mechanism. And here you can see this plunger and a spring that provides a positive upward force. And that uh, forces these teeth on the end of this plunger to engage with the uh, corresponding relief cuts uh, milled into the head. Now if you examine the pl plunger closely, you can see that one end will have a completely round and um, one end will have a milled side you guys can see that. You guys can see a square dent imprinted in it and this side is just plain. Well, it's good to know that for orientation purposes because that flat corresponds with the locking tab side. So when installing it, keep that in mind. So, first step, after you've done your cleaning or whatever you feel like uh, you had to do, uh, is to install the spring. Now that this spring's installed, now what you want to do is install the plunger. Now, like I said earlier, keep in mind that one side has a flat edge to it, while the other side has a plane, uh, rounded. So you guys want to take the milled edge and have that facing you and facing up. Now be mindful that you want uh, the screw, the screw hole to be accessible through that, that portal. So, we'll go through here, we'll line it up. And there it is. You guys can see that. And that's going to allow you to uh, run this fastener into it. Now here's the trickiest part. What you're going to do is with the hole aligned, you're going to want to stick your finger here and push down. And that's going to give you uh, enough clearance to allow the locking tab to be inserted in there. Uh, and also run that down. So this is something I cannot film. But you guys can uh, get the gesture of holding this down and running that fastener in, uh, the locking tab fastener, uh, through here. Okay, after doing that, and it's all snug, you guys could, uh, obviously confirm and check the function of it. So it should be able to go like this, and hold down. Really nice. So that's good. Now, let's move on to actually installing, or reinstalling the ratchet head to the actual handle, and we'll be done. Now, just a tech tip for you guys. Uh, if you guys have one of these uh, non-locking variants and you're having a pain uh, in, in keeping the head uh, from wobbling, what you could do is take the split washer and actually split it out more, like I've done here, and that makes this uh, the joint naturally stiff. Now the caveat to that is it makes it more a pain in the ass to uh, install, but I'll show you a tip um, that I use that uh, helps me to get this on usually one or two tries. So I'll show you that right now. Okay, so making sure that it's on the right side, so you have the handle and here. So making sure, what you want to do is start it, uh, start the ratchet head just like this. What I usually do is tilt it to the side, and I have it uh, strategized as such. You want the split in the washer to be the last thing you want to install, because if that goes in first and gets trapped here, you're going to have one hell of a day uh, getting it off. And it won't be able to install. It'll keep dancing around. And those that have done it know exactly what I'm talking about. So you want that split in the washer to be the last thing. And you're going to push it on. Okay. So I have it installed as such. Obviously make sure that the thing is out of the way. So it's not obstructing your ratchet head from, in, from going in. Um, but yeah. So now you guys can see that. But once you have it. Uh, you're home free. So we just do some minute adjustments. Um, like that. 
and once you're able to see it perfectly like that you're ready to install the joint screw cool after that's tight and you should be done so you guys can check this out so this is on the fully unlocked position and I'm swinging it and it doesn't move at all so granted that's the trade-off you pay uh, with a tough installation but you could have a stiffer joint I mean yeah this thing's crazy so uh, obviously operate the ratchet make sure it's fully functional but that's really how you do it that's how you uh, remove the locking mechanism uh, split the joint and uh, rebuild the head so you guys take care